Hi, welcome to the first lecture from this course, Introduction to Machine Learning in Julia. So in this course, we'll be learning Julia completely from scratch, how to install it, how to code your first line of code, etc. So I'm assuming that you don't know anything about the Julia programming language. And through this, we will learn how to implement machine learning along with learning some foundational concepts within machine learning. So let's first look at what exactly is Julia. Uh, you may have heard of Julia, you may not have heard of this, but since you are attending this course, I assume that you have some interest in learning Julia. And before entering into the lecture, I would also like to talk a bit about motivation. So um, what I have generally seen is people will start a course, but they have less motivation to take themselves past the first few lectures. So usually the number of people who go through the lectures is like an exponentially decaying function. First two lectures, there will be maximum number of people attending and then later it decreases. It's also true for me. Uh, I think the number of courses I have started but not finished is much, uh, it's very high. But uh, I think if you can somehow take a pledge for yourself or uh, if you can, you know, uh, if you can discuss with other people in the community about this course, somehow keep some kind of external motivation for finishing the course so that uh, you can totally benefit from it. So coming back to Julia, Julia is a programming language like C, C++, Fortran, Python, etc. And it was created at MIT. Professor Alan Edelman was one of the uh, founding founding team members of Julia language. And uh, now there are some big names in Julia, like uh, Viral Shah or uh, Chris Rakaukas. He's also like a co-principal investigator at uh, MIT Julia Lab. So it's a it's a beautiful language. It makes a lot of things easy for you uh, as a scientist or machine learning specialist. So some of the specialities of Julia, which uh, the the team at Julia also so proudly mentions, and also some of the things that uh, we have seen from our experience of working in Julia are high speed of execution, especially in certain contexts. Not for all kinds of codes, but but for some kind of code, yes. Syntax is very uh, straightforward, and it's very uh intuitive to understand it's not it's not you know complex and it will not make you feel like you are learning a completely new language it's it's relatively much more easy i had much more difficulty learning i would say c++ and uh, it's it's designed for scientific computing machine learning data science etc and it has very good packages for learning about neural networks and also learning about uh, also implementing scientific machine learning so scientific machine learning is uh, a very fast growing booming field uh, within machine learning you may have heard of concepts like physics informed neural networks and julia makes it very easy to uh, implement these things and one of the things that i have heard from people who have used julia for pretty much all their career is that julia is often as fast as c or c++ but as uh, intuitive uh, or easy to use as matlab something like that so uh, Julia is very special. So if you are learning it, it's it's a very good decision. Although I must say that Julia for machine learning is not as popular as Python. In industry, there are lesser number of companies actually implementing Julia for solving their industry level problems. But the number of people who are going to use this is only going to increase as more and more packages are coming as more and more uh, smart, highly, uh, you know, highly uh, ambitious and uh, big scientists are coming into this uh, uh, Julia community and contributing to it. So uh, my feeling is that if you are a expert in Julia at the moment in the world, you can differentiate yourself to a great extent. So let's look at a few more things. So there are a few resources that you should be definitely aware of uh, with respect to Julia. You can uh, check these out, not necessarily right now. You can maybe keep them in your bookmark. One of them is, of course, the GitHub repo of uh, Julia organization. So this Julia repo from Julia, La Julia language organization has 45k stars. And there are a uh, large number of contributors here, you can see that there are 1500 contributors to this. So this is a very, very live repo, uh, where constant updations happening for packages and and many other things. And within the Julia organization, you can see several other repos as well, uh, for packages for plotting, uh, then so this is pkg.jl uh, and there are many many other repos so you will see that this is a very thriving um, fast growing uh, community of people there is also julia um, website so that is julialang.org you can of course check this out and uh, from here you can find a few other resources how to download julia 
um, how to find community and then some resources from where you can learn. So if you click this learn button, you can you can find different small courses to learn Julia, uh, their YouTube channel, etc. So the Julia's YouTube channel is also pretty uh, good. It has, I think, 80K subscribers or 84, 85K subscribers. There are so many interesting videos. So do check this out. This is I'm, I'm sure that you are going to love this. Uh, love, love being subscribed to Ju Julia's YouTube channel. Um, just, um, um, you know, keep track of what is happening in um, Julia, GitHub, etc. The the last thing, the fourth thing which I want to talk about this is the Slack channel uh, of Julia community. Let me show that. So this is Julia Slack channel. It has around, I think, um, 16,000 or something members. Here it's showing 8,000, but at some point, I think it has total, let me check. Yeah, it has, this general Slack channel has 17,000 members. So roughly maybe that many members are there on this uh, Julia Slack. So uh, just follow this. If you want to access this Slack, all you need to do is uh, go to the Julia website over here. And then um, I think in community somewhere it should be there. I'll put the link to the Julia Slack so over here. So official Julia Slack. So if you click here, it will take you to the Slack community of Julia. So these are the resources that uh, I would like you to be aware of. And uh, this will be helpful. If not today, it will be helpful to you at some point of time. So we are all good. We are good to start. First step is installing Julia and let us implement our first lines of code in Julia. So the equivalent of hello world. So let's get into that. To install Julia, go to Google and type Julia, Julia language, Julia, anything you can type and you will get this website link for Julia programming language. So go to that. So this is their official website, julialang.org. And you can download Julia for your computer from here. So click download button over here. And I'm using Mac. Uh, if you are using Windows, you can see the option here. So here, I think they have automatically detected uh, the way to download Julia. But I think the instructions for Windows is over here. Yeah, I think this one is for uh, instruction for Windows. So basically, you will have to run this code in the in the command line, uh, in the terminal equivalent. So you, you open your command line interface and uh, install Julia. But here I'm going to do this in Mac. So let me first copy this and open my terminal. And I'll paste this here. I think I had installed Julia previously, so I'm not sure. OK, it's being installed. OK, I think I had Julia installed before itself. So uh, this step is not um, very important for me. But uh, if you don't have Julia installed before, uh, just go through this step. I don't think there was any major hiccup in, you know, uh, while installing. I thought I thought I think it was fairly straightforward. Um, if you come across any any issues while installing, just just mention that because I don't know what kind of unique issues will people face while installing. Uh, I don't know what are the most common most common you know bottlenecks. If you come across any issue, just post it in the in the comment. But uh, assuming that you can easily get through this step, uh, I will also show you one more thing. So I would like to install. I would like to use Julia through the um, through Jupyter Notebook. You can you can use Julia directly from the command line interface. Like sorry, the terminal here. So let me zoom in a little bit. So here, if I type Julia, it will open Julia. Yeah, like this. So there is something called Julia REPL, um, read, execute, uh, print loop. Let me show you Julia REPL. So this is nothing but it's like a interactive command line. So I assume uh, this is available only for your terminal or command line interface. So you can run Julia code here itself or you can run Julia from the interface in like write the code in VS code and execute it. Uh, using uh, Julia RAPL. I'm going to, for this course, I'm going to be using uh, Jupyter Notebook because uh, it seems to be the most uh, commonly used interface among, especially among the people who are starting this. So I'll I'll type Jupyter Notebook. And I, I had Jupyter Notebook before, but I uninstalled it uh, just so that I can start from scratch and, and show you it here. So click install Jupyter Lab. So I'll type I think I have Jupyter Lab installed. Maybe I don't have Jupyter Notebook. So go to terminal and here copy paste this pip install Jupyter Lab. 
yeah i think requirement is already satisfied so i have jupiter lab already then i'll install jupiter notebook next so copy paste pip install jupiter notebook sorry pip install notebook i have node jupiter notebook also i guess i don't think my uninstallation before was successful i think i think i have jupiter notebook so if i type notebook it should open yeah so this is my jupiter notebook so i do have jupiter notebook already so uh, basically you can i'll i'll show you how to change the kernel and everything the the by default it will be in python but here we'll have to open it in julia so that's about installing the julia and uh, installing jupiter notebook so please follow through these steps it's fairly straightforward i'll share the links in the chat if you come across any issues any specific issues just mention it uh, we'll be happy to help uh, now let's actually go to jupiter notebook and try to execute our first lines of code in julia for you to be able to run julia on jupiter notebook you have to install uh, something called i julia so firstly we can do something julia version we can check uh, it shows julia version 1.1.1 then uh, then now we have to add the uh, i julia package so first let us open julia so this is my terminal right so here type julia same thing applies for windows command line uh, interface so then this will open julia repl repl is uh, read uh, execute print l is for loop or something so so this is that now we have to add a package so this is how we can add the package uh using package run using package pkg then pkg dot add uh i julia So you know this ipy notebook right so this is similar to that i had already installed this i think maybe it's just updating i'm not sure uh, i thought i already installed i julia but it's okay this should not take too much time so after this what i will do is like i will exit the julia uh, repl from the terminal and then um, i will go to jupiter notebook and on jupiter notebook you will see that there is also now a julia kernel available usually it's a, by default it's a python kernel so i will show you that once the addition of i julia has been finished now you will have julia kernel also available in jupiter notebook so here i can exit uh, so that i am back to my terminal and then here let's type jupiter notebook this should open the jupiter notebook okay so now we have the jupiter notebook opening here and yeah and then click so you can open existing folder existing things from the folder here but i'm going to start a new uh, notebook so here click new notebook and when this is opening i had previously opened it and set my kernel as julia but otherwise so here along with python you will also see julia 1.11.1 so select that and maybe i'll say always start the preferred kernel select if you did not see this option i think if you by if you click this here you can change the kernel otherwise here you can change um, change kernel so click kernel and click change kernel then you here you can select julia uh, by default it will be python 3 so now here i will rename this as julia my first julia code okay so now here we have julia running let's write our first line of code print ln welcome to julia this is my first line of code and then we can run then it will print that so 
this is we have written the first line of code in Julia now. And now what we can do is we can learn some basic commands. Uh, I mean, in this age of chat GPT, it's not necessary that you learn entire syntax. It's not completely mandatory. But that being said, it's still very powerful to know a language and its basic commands, basic syntax, uh, even if you are not you are not knowing it by heart. So uh, because it will give you a lot of independence while while running the code or while writing the code, you can write a lot of things by yourself. But wherever you are kind of mixing the same mixing and, and uh, confusing between the syntax or Python syntax for Julia, etc. You can take the help of Internet, take the help of any, you know, chat GPT or uh, anthropic cloud or anything so that's not a problem but uh, here we'll be writing everything from scratch now let's write some new lines of code so here we don't have to explicitly define x is an integer x is something else we can we can make x whatever we want based on what value we assign so let's say here we write x equal to 2 and then we run the code then it is printing but we can also print type of x and then it will it will show you that this is an integer but if we if we say y equal to 2.0 and then write type of y this will this will show that automatically float is being assigned to y because the value that is assigned to y is that of a float um, we can do something similar with character as well as string so So let's say z equal to a. So now a is a character. So now if we do type of uh, a, uh, z, this should so show that uh, it's a character. Car. I can increase my font a little bit. Yeah. Now what else? There is string. So let's say str equal to this is a string. And we can, so it has to be in double quotes, or I think there is one more thing like triple quotes, uh, triple double quotes. Let's uh, show that. So type of str. This is string. And next is str2 equal to, this is also a string. So this is also a string. However, if we put just single quotes, then this should throw an error. Yeah, because single quotes is for character, double quote or triple double quote is like for string. Okay, so this let me delete. Now there is one more interesting thing which I want to show you. You can also use like emojis. So let me open some emoji and this will allow me to so let's say this i don't know how to copy this i think if i just click it's copying right yeah so this equal to two and this equal to three and this equal to 15 now we can do like you know this minus this is minus one this should print minus one so see this is minus one if we make this into float it's minus 1.0 so type of we can also find type of this uh, this is float but if you just type type of this it should be string uh, it should be int so this is in 64 and let's say i don't think double emoji we can use right let's check i don't know if this works okay it also works this is a character so we can do like minus this this should throw an error because you are subtracting uh an integer from a character oh okay this is 
we could try making this into a uh, string. I'm curious to see what happens. Yeah, okay. For string, there is an error, but if it's a character, it can it can be converted into like ASCII. Okay. So this is another cool feature for uh, that Julia has. Um, it's not really highly relevant for machine learning, but still it will give you um, idea about all the things that Julia has in its arsenal. Uh, now let's uh, let's do some some product etc. So a equal to two, b equal to three, uh, a multiplied by b. We should print six. So I'll print everything. Print then this is subtracting, right? Then let's print a raised to b and what else? I think that's all. So a multiplied by b is 2, a minus b is minus 1, a raised to b is 2 raised to 3, it's 8. So these are some basic operations. And uh, we can also do print a greater than b. Then it should be false. A equal to equal to b should also be false. A not equal to b should be true. So that is true. But this is false. Greater than or equal to b is. I think I have to print like a slash next line. Oh, I'm just printing, not print print line. Okay. Uh, this is false. I mean, this is true. This is false. So that is. These are some basic operators that where we compare. Now let's print uh, strings a bit dynamically. So let's define name equal to Sridhar. Then let's say we are printing like this. My name is. Then we can print this variable. But all we need to do is like we have to give a dollar symbol like this. Then this will be taken as the variable. So then when we run, it should print my name is Sridhar. So here. Here we can put whatever whatever you want to put. My name is test. So this is one way in which you can you can print like variables. Next. Variables within the string. Next is. First name equal to this. Last name. Equal to this. And we can print. And we can print both together. Let me print ln first name, last name. So this will print uh, without a space. Then what we can do is if we want a space, we can do something like this. Put, put this in double quotes. First name. Then space dollar last name and then run. So this will print like this. But otherwise, you can also print like this print first name and last name. This should also hopefully print the same thing. So here, we are kind of concatenating three strings, the first name, then just a space and then the last name. So this is a one way of printing uh, strings together. We can also define variables. So full name equal to, we can write like And then print full name. This should print the full name because here we are concatenating. I want to test one more thing which I have not tried. Uh, equal to first name 
I am not sure if this, what will this print? Okay, so I just need a space. Okay, so this is also the same thing. So here again, I can just simply use variable name uh, in, in defining a new string. So here first name is a variable name for this variable. Uh, last name is again a variable name for my last name variable. And then in between, I'm inserting a space. You can just clean this up a little bit, but yeah. So this is this is about operations uh, using strings. Now we can look at uh, arrays. So uh, let's say array one equal to one, two, three, four, five. Then this will print the array. It's a, it's a vector, single dimensional. But if we do this, so okay, so in array we can actually modify. So we can say array one of one equal to three, and then we can print array one. So here you can see that uh, in the original definition, the array one, the first element of array one was one. But here, uh, so here, by the way, the counting starts from uh, index one. So it goes till index five. So here index five, if it's changing, changing to three, then this value will be changing to three. So just run it and you see that uh, the last element is changed to three. But uh, you can you can define something called as a tuple. So tuple equal to Now here you can print, uh, you can also say the type of, I'll name this as tuple one. So this is tuple, whereas here if we print type of array one, it should be vector. So vector, it's an alias for array uh, in this particular case. And this is a tuple. Now in tuple, we cannot do the same thing. So here we can print the first element of tuple, second element of tuple, etc. But we cannot say like second element of tuple is equal to four because tuple we cannot uh, mutate. But we can do the, this, this for an array because here we can print. So let's say, let me delete this. So here I'm changing the value of the, the second element of the tuple. Here I'm changing the value of the second element of the array. This is possible here. The second element of array will change to four. Then if I print ln of array one, you will see that the second element has changed to four, right? Uh, whereas the array one was first element, second element was two. Whereas in tuple, um, we cannot mutate. So this is an issue. So please, uh, please notice this uh, feature about the tuple. Now, a few more things before we wind up uh, our introduction to Julia coding. Uh, let's look at AND operator. So uh, is greater equal to two greater than three. And this should be false. But what about this? is true so if two greater than three and three greater than two are both true then this will be true otherwise the output should be false so this output should output is false but what if it is uh five greater than so this or This is true because this condition is true, but this condition is false. So overall it is true. But if we have and operator, then only one of the conditions is true, which means uh, overall it will be false. So this is one of them. We can also add a few different things here. Five minus two greater than two. Five minus two is indeed greater than two. Uh, but this condition is false. So maybe here I'll put four, then this will be true. But if this is five minus three, then this will become false because five minus three is not greater than two. It's greater than or equal to two. So then this will be true. So this, this, these are some and 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 or operators, which you will, of course, know, uh, very famous operators. 
now a uh, few more couple of things so what i wanted to show was in tuple you can store different types of uh, elements so in an array so if this this was an array array 1 equal to 1 2 3 4 5 right so then we can this, this has no issue this will this code will run and it will print uh, let me also print both so we are printing the tuple and the array now if the first element is like a string and then the third element is a character tuple has no problem tuple can handle that but in array this is like the type okay now let's also print the type of tuple one type of array one and i'm printing uh print ln type of array one yeah so here originally the array one was completely integers right so if if this was just like this then you see it's a vector of int 64 uh basically integers but if suddenly one of them changes to this then this will become any because now it can have it is consisting of not just integers uh in tuple on the other hand you can see that individually it's listing first one is string second is int third is character fourth is int and if this was 5.0 that should show as float then the last one will be float 64 so uh, this is some basic difference between tuple and array we can cover this in a little bit more detail in the next lecture but this is the basic idea of coding in uh, julia it's fa fairly straightforward uh, nothing complex so far and we won't be going into the entire detail of data types functions etc we'll only touch upon it on on a surface basis surface level because our focus is more on uh, going into data science related concepts and machine learning related concepts and we'll be more focused on the packages which are useful for those so this brings us to the end of this lecture we will uh, now look at the um, in the next lecture onwards we'll look at some more aspects about programming functions uh, loops and a few other data types in Julia. And after that, from the following lecture onwards, we'll be looking at uh, how to perform certain data science, uh, basic things that we do in data science in Julia. And then following that, we'll be looking at machine learning. And after that, we'll be going into deep learning. So this is the entire course structure. So uh, stay with me throughout the course. If you are attending this lecture, please make sure you're attending the next one also. And uh, ensure that you have motivation to keep coming back and uh, doing these things yourself uh, as you are watching the lecture. So if you have some struggles installing Julia, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. But if you if installing Julia was fairly easy, just pause the video, install Julia and run these codes along with me so that you're not procrastinating it for later time. Uh, so you can learn along with me. So uh, hope you enjoyed this lecture. We'll meet again in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye.